Hey, what's going on? It's Chris Carino. This is the Voice of the Nets podcast. You know, in 2015, after his senior year at Baylor, Royce O'Neal went undrafted. And there are success stories in the NBA of players that have gone undrafted, but it, there aren't a lot of them. And when you go undrafted, a lot of times your NBA journey has to begin in places like Ludwigsburg, Germany, and Las Palmas, Spain. That's where it began for Royce O'Neal. He was about to play in Lithuania before the Utah Jazz came calling. And as an undrafted 24-year-old rookie, starting out at the end of the bench in Salt Lake City, eventually earned the trust of his head coach, Quinn Snyder. And in the second round of the playoffs, he found himself in the starting lineup, matched up defensively against James Harden. And you, you earn the trust of NBA coaches on the defensive side of the floor. And it was in that playoff series in his rookie year that Royce O'Neal started to get the reputation of being a top-flight NBA on-the-ball defender. And over the next four years after that, he would become the best perimeter defender on the Jazz. He was the guy that was always matched up with the best offensive player, perimeter player on the other team. There's a, there's a saying in uh, professional sports, defense travels. That is the case kind of metaphorically with Royce O'Neal. He's also been a pretty reliable three-point shooter, over 38% in his career, nearly 40% of the playoffs in 40 playoff games. That's the player that the Nets gave up a first-round pick to get. And this circuitous NBA journey that has taken him through uh, Europe, Salt Lake City, and now on to Brooklyn. You can tell how much the Nets think of Royce O'Neal by giving up a first-round pick next year to get him. Royce is out in Las Vegas with a lot of the other uh, NBA players supporting the Summer League players out there. He's been out there getting to know some of his new teammates, watching Cam Thomas. Man, what's he Again, in the, in, the, uh, in the summer league, lighting it up. Uh, Dayron Sharp making posters out of people. It's been an interesting uh, first couple of games there in the summer league for the Nets. Hope you've enjoyed it. I know that Royce O'Neal has enjoyed it. We had a chance to catch up to him while he was in Vegas and talk about his journey to Brooklyn. Hope you uh, enjoy our up-close and personal chat with Royce O'Neal here on The Voice of the Nets. Royce, you're out there in Vegas. I know uh, it's summer league, but there's a lot of vets around. And it, it seems to be almost like a little convention of NBA players and coaches and GMs. What's the atmosphere like out there in Las Vegas? Uh, I mean, it's a great atmosphere. You know, uh, see all the coaches, players, you know, uh, GMs, watch the young guys play, you know, get the experience. And then, you know, just have fun, you know, see everybody, you know, talk to them and then, you know, just enjoy these games. I saw you the other night uh, courtside with some of your new teammates. Nick Claxton was there and Ben Simmons was there. I mean, first of all, when I see you and Ben uh, together, it looked like you might have been on the runway at a runway show in Milan. Uh, <laughs> right. You know, you guys got a lot of the kids would say drip going on right there. Yeah. Is that uh, were you comparing fashions? Uh, a little bit. I mean, you know, I think it's just, you know, I think it's just it's born in us. You know, I think we got it. Uh you know, but, uh, you know, trying to keep up with those guys, you know, not an easy task, but <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep up with the labels, right? R right. Definitely. Is so. it, is there one label that you're kind of, uh, loyal to your favorite? Uh, I mean, I try, I wear a little bit of everything. So, you know, whatever I look good in, you know, it feels great. You know, I really don't worry about the labels, you know, now, I can get a white, I can get a plain white tee from Walmart and just say it's, you know, like, some exclusive brand. You now know. you're talking my language, Royce. Now, <laughs> now, now I have shirts I've been wearing for probably this shirt I've been wearing for like, you know, 15 years or something right. like that. So, you exactly. know, um, so. Did, did you have a relationship with any of your, your, your new teammates 
uh, prior um, to this, or is this a good way to get to know some of these guys? Uh, I mean, great way to know some of these guys. I mean, once I got traded, you know, Ben Ben was actually one of the first guys that hit me up. Uh, and I've been talking a little bit with Patty, and then you know, a couple other guys, you know, Nick, and then a couple others. So, but uh, you know, just getting to know them, you know, everybody making me feel welcome, you know. So, I mean, it's been good. So, it's been great so far. And, and you were there courtside watching uh, some of the young players play. Uh, how do you watch a summer? I, I know you've been through the summer league. You you were right. a part of it as a yeah. young player trying to make it in the league. W- a couple of things. What did it mean to have the vets kind of show up mm-hmm. and, and sit courtside and watch you guys? And what's going through your mind when you see those guys there? I mean, it means a lot. I mean, you know, just, you know, the support. And, you know, uh, giving them advice, you know, giving their insight on the game, you know, when I was playing and, you know, me doing that now to the young guys. Uh, I mean, summer league, you know, you're supposed to enjoy it, uh, you know, have fun with it. And then, you know, it's a learning, it's great learning experience for everybody. And, you know, that's what everybody's here to do. And, and watching a game, you know, you're watching young players, um, where the fans are looking at it like, can this guy help? You know, is this guy going to have an NBA career? When you're when you're sitting courtside and you're watching these young players play, what are some of the things that that you're looking that you're looking for? Some of the things that that you're curious to see out yeah. of certain guys. Uh, I mean, just you know, seeing guys that you know playing hard, you know, doing the little things that count that don't show up in the stat sheet. Um, you know, everybody just. You know, being a team player, uh, you know, great spirits, you know, great teammate and everything. You know, it's stuff that's going to lead over to the season, so. Yeah, I mean, because you're looking at it from a different perspective. At people, A lot of people look at scoring. They'll look at, you know, if the guy's shooting the ball well. But you're right. probably seeing little things that, that the average fan might not notice. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, everybody's going to score. I mean, everybody, that's what everybody wants to do, but. I like, you know, I like looking at who's playing defense, you know, who's taking the challenge, uh, who's doing like the small things, you know, so. That's what you are. I mean, right. you're a guy that's not necessarily has to score. You're out there because you're going to play defense. Um, when when you're watching a guy defend and, and you're in your mind, what's the what are the key things to look at? Is it the feet? Is it the hands? Is it the, you know, getting his balance? Like, what are what are things that you can see as a good defender you notice in other guys? Uh, I mean, I think all the above, you know, feet, uh, hands, you know, how active they are, you know, vocal, um, you know, helping guys out, you know, talking on defense. I think, you know, it's the little things that, you know, people leave out or don't see that, you know, guys that actually do, you know, can benefit from and, you know, other guys pick up and feed off that and, you know, do it as well. Now, uh, Royce, you're, you're out there in Vegas. Is What is it about? 110 today? Uh, what, what? Think, like 111. <laughs> Yesterday was 114. <laughs> really? It's crazy. Uh, it's a dry heat though, right? That's what people yeah. tell you. <laughs> yeah, dry heat. But, but, you know, I'm from Texas, so. I was know, just like, about to say, you're from yeah. Killeen, Texas, right? So I'm sure you're right. used to the heat. Yeah, I'm used to, you know, the humidity, but this is a different type of heat. It's like you walk outside and it's just like a heat wave just hits you right in the face. And then like you just be so like happy when you walk inside an yeah. uh, air conditioning building. So, Yeah, now, now being a kid from Texas, uh, let, let's go back now. I want to go through your career a little bit here. Um, you, you, you started at University of Denver yeah. uh, for a couple of years. Now, then you end up at Baylor. Now, Baylor is close to Colleen. How, how far is Baylor from where you were growing Probably up? Probably 45 minutes to an hour, maybe. Okay. And uh, you transferred. Sort of yeah, and you transferred back to Baylor for some family stuff, right? I think your grandfather was was under the yeah. weather, but was was sick. Um, yeah. So you, you didn't have to sit out a year. Um, yeah, I actually what got was a, that? Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I actually got a waiver, you know, like right as the season was starting. I mean, I wasn't sure if we was going to get it. So, like, you know, I was prepared to sit out, but, you know, you know, right timing and everything. And it just happened right as the season started and I was able to play right away. So did they originally recruit you to Baylor? Uh, they actually did. I mean, high school, you know, I had some interests, you know, uh, Coach Drew, Coach Tang, uh, yeah. you know, a little bit. So they were familiar with me. And then one of the guys, actually, Corey Jefferson, um, you know, he's from Colleen as well. And he's also he actually played in Brooklyn as well. And then um, yeah. he he was at Baylor at the time, and then you know we had a great relationship. So I mean, he, you know, once I transferred, he you know reached out and 
talk to me, you know, a lot. So, was it originally you wanted to get away from home? I mean, is that the reason? Like, like why would like I would imagine Baylor's that that local school, and um, what were the reasons that you ended up going to Denver originally? Uh, well, I actually broke my ankle my junior year of high school, uh, like second half of the year. So I actually missed out like the rest of the year and then playing AAU. So like all the interest and everything that I had, you know, kind of dropped. And then, yeah. um, you know, came back senior year, played. And then, you know, I just felt like Denver at the time was the best opportunity. And, you know, that's where I went. So were you happy to get back to Baylor, though? I mean, you ended up on some pretty good teams there. Yeah, uh, I mean, definitely was. I mean, especially like being right by home so it was like good you know feeling me came up and I went right down um but and then you know Baylor is a great school right now shout out to those guys nice. coach Drew coach yeah. Drew the things he's doing you know with that program and then so yeah it's a, they, he's turned it into a powerhouse no doubt no, about for it sure. definitely and and you played with uh Torian Prince Right? In, yeah, uh, I did. Yeah, we was, uh, we was actually roommates. And then, you know, once I got traded, you know, he reached out. He was like, man, you're going to enjoy Brooklyn. You know, those guys are great. Treat. I had a great time there. So, you know, I yeah, talked to I, me I, and him are still close. So, I, I wasn't sure because, you know, when he got traded, he was part of that, that Harden deal. And, yeah. you know, he, he, he wasn't happy. Like he was, he was upset. I, I know a lot of his comments afterwards and I guess that's because he actually, you know, he really enjoyed his time in Brooklyn and didn't want to leave. Yeah, he didn't. I mean, he said he enjoyed it, but I mean, you know, next chapter, next journey. Yeah. So the journey continues, but you know, I'm happy for him and he just signed an extension. So, you know, yeah, that's my guy. Isaiah, Isaiah Austin, right? With you, it was on that one yeah. team in Baylor yeah, too? Yeah, he was, he was with us on um, my first year when I got there and I actually, um, and he actually, like, I mean, I still talk to him and everything and, you know, seeing him when I first got out here. So I'm happy for him. You know, he's doing yeah. his thing in the NBA well, like yeah, front he, office. So he, Yeah, right before the draft, he was the guy. He had, a, he had an illness. They discovered a, a disease that he had, and he wasn't able to play anymore. But now he's trying to get involved in the league, right? Yeah, definitely. So so you you ended up with one year you went to the Sweet 16 with with Torian Prince and those guys, the next year I think you went out in the first round. But um, then your NBA journey, you're you're you know you obviously I'm sure you had dreams of being an NBA player. Uh, mm -hmm. You find yourself playing overseas now. You yeah. have to go to to Spain and you played in the Bundesliga in Germany. Uh, from a from a cultural standpoint, I mean, what was that experience like from a kid from Texas who went to Baylor? Now you're out in Germany and Spain. I mean, what yeah. was that experience like for you? Uh, I mean, it was a great experience. I mean, going all the way across the world, uh, you know, by myself was, you know, a little different. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, like the experience and, you know, culture and, you know, playing basketball, you know, it was great. Uh, traveling all around Europe to play, you know, seeing all the different cities and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I mean... You know, the talent over there is, you know, great. And, and so I was good. What was something that stood out from maybe your time in uh, in Germany that we, or, or Spain that was particularly impactful or, or you enjoyed doing as part of, you know, being part of that culture and, the, and living there? I mean, it's different than when you go visit, right? you know? Uh, I'll probably say just like just traveling. And then, you know, finding something to do in her free time, whether it was like going to like, you know, like sightseeing or like a mall or like just like the beach in Spain or, you know, just somewhere, you know, yeah, everything. Yeah, soaking you it know, in, right? You'd be what it's like to, to live there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> and then, you know, everything was like kind of easy. They had somebody that was showing me around and everything. So. Is it was the was the practice in the games as in intense in terms of how frequently as it was as it is in the NBA? Uh, definitely. I mean, you know, the fans are like really into it. Uh, practice, you know, kind of, you know, is like straight to it. Uh, you know, playing like the games, but uh, I mean, I had a great experience over there. You know, just basketball wise, learning everything. And I think like just being over there helped like my game out like all around, you know, just, yeah. you know, just doing a little bit of everything. 
I, I remember one time the Nets had uh, Gerald Green, and I remember he was talking about um, how he had he had gone over to China yeah. and was playing, and he's like, you know, it made him realize. He kind of said, "I my dream wasn't to play basketball for a living. My dream was to play in the NBA." Mm. And and he kind of then got serious about getting back and doing what he had to do to get into the NBA. He was making a good living overseas. And right. a lot of guys can make a good living overseas, but was there always that some part of you like, well, I've got to do what I can to get to the NBA? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, every year, like I came back, you know, did mini camps, played in summer league. So, you know, I, and I had that dream I was going to make the NBA. And it was just right, right opportunity, right timing. And then, um, you know, so I just kept that window open and I was just like, you know, whatever I got to do over here, however long, like, I'm going to do it, you know, enjoy it and have fun. And then when that opportunity for the NBA comes, just take advantage of it and just, you know, enjoy the journey. Did you have a mini camp with the Jazz before you got in? Do you remember what that was like? Uh, Yeah, um, I actually had one in Brooklyn and then I went to Utah for okay. a mini camp, uh, but it was good. I mean, you know, just, you know, back then they didn't have like the two ways, like extra spots. So, um, and I just like felt like going overseas, you know, helped me out at, and then you know, the right decision at the time. And then once like played summer league and then, you know, got the opportunity with the jazz and then, you know, I was excited and, and then just here I am. What? My sources told me there might have been a trip to the dentist involved with that first oh, uh, jazz man. free For agent sure. camp. Yeah, it's actually the what first was that day. Story? First day, um, it was first drill, like the first ten minutes. You know, doing the closeout drill defensively, and um, like guy drives on me and then like hits me with a shoulder and like you know hit hit me in the mouth, but like I'm just thinking my lip is bleeding. Yeah. And then so I'm like keeping going. And then like one of the coaches, actually, uh Alex Jensen, he was like, Oh wait, we got a tooth on the ground. And I was like, <laughs> wait, hold on. And then I was it like, oh. And then it was me. And then I was like, and then they so they pulled me out and I was like, Well, can I keep going? Or and then so I literally <laughs> went to the dentist and then like came back like later on for the second practice. And then it worked out. And then actually the first preseason game. It got knocked out again. So I was oh. like, man. <laughs> so it took a little bit. And then like once I like made the team and then took a little bit, got got it permanently fixed. So I was good. And then like, I mean, you can't even like tell it happened. So which I, didn't smile, I didn't smile for like a week. Uh my front <laughs> right, right, right here. So, oh man. Yeah. Like the yeah. moneymaker, the big one right there. Right there. I didn't I didn't Maybe. smile for like a week. So I was like, yeah. You're like a hockey player for a little right. while. Exactly. I would imagine like that might have made more of an impression no, on the was. coaches. No, I did. They was like, oh, well, okay, he's actually <laughs> tough and you're going to play through yeah. anything. And that's kind of what it was. Because I was like, I mean, I was like, I'm not worried about it. I'm worried about it later. The only thing I'm worried about is like making the team, you know, you know, doing whatever I got to do. So, And then it took a little while, right, at Utah? I mean, eventually you become a starter there and you become a key piece um, but you know, you had to, you had to bide your time and, and kind of, uh, pay your dues there, right? For a couple of years. Yeah, for sure. I mean, first year, you know, rookie year, uh, great learning experience, you know, played a little bit here and there at first. And then actually the first time, like I actually got like the real opportunity, real mi minutes was when we played Brooklyn actually. And then, um, you know, kind of took off and then at the like end of the season and then in playoffs, the next thing I know, I'm starting in playoffs guarding mm -hmm. James Harden as a rookie and I'm like I'm drafted to start and then like every year just you know take the progression you got better every year you know every aspect of my game and then you know coaches having to trust coach Quinn you know having to trust in me you know guarding the best player and then just being myself and I and I saw some clips of you I remember seeing you as a rookie going up against Harden defensively and he's pulling out every move I mean, he's yeah. giving you everything he's got to try and get by you or go to that, you know, that crossover, that pull up. And I, I, I'm sure you're in the moment at that time and you're mm. not really getting the, you know, thinking of like, wow, this is James Harden. But at right. some point, there's got to be a point, think where you went and you went, wow, this is a guy that 
all NBA player, you know, top 75 guy, not at the time, but in your mind, what is that experience like to all of a sudden be going from playing in the Bundesliga and having that dream of being in the NBA to now I'm in a playoff game guarding James Harden? Uh, I mean, it's like a surreal feeling. Like, you know, it's like moments you dream about. And then like actually being able to do it. And then especially like my situation, it was just like a dream come true. And then like, I'm really living this dream. Did you feel that that was going to be your role? I mean, as a as an NBA player, that's how you were going to stay in the league was, you know, guard people and, and do the little things? Uh, for sure. I mean, uh, you know, taking the challenge is just guarding the best player. Like, I mean, I knew coming in, like, I wasn't going to be the first, second, third option. Uh, you know, whatever I had to do was, you know, be on the court. That's what I was going to do. And then, you know, guarding the best player and working on my game offensively and, you know, just keep getting better. And then, so I said, I mean, if that's the way I got to play, like guarding the best player, like why not? I mean, I love the challenge. I mean, you know, I'm one of the few guys who actually like playing defense. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's something that coaches are constantly battling with, right? Trying to get right. here. I got finally got a guy who likes to play defense. <laughs> right. So you had another guy there, a teammate in Rudy Gobert, who liked to play defense and was one yeah. of the best in the league. Um, obviously now he's been traded to Minnesota, uh, but with, between Donovan, Mitchell and Gobert and, and, you know, you guys rose, you, you, you were, com- you know, you were competing for a Western conference title there for a couple of years. And now it's kind of been broken up a little bit. We don't know what's going to happen over the next few months, but was there a sense of maybe unfinished business there in Utah? Did you, did you feel a sense of disappointment that it, you didn't rise a little further than you maybe wanted to with that group? I mean, I mean, uh, we had a great group. I mean, you know, we was in positions to, you know, win. Um, I mean, I think injuries, you know, hurt us a lot. It didn't like, you know, uh, but, you know, the opportunity and, you know, the team we had, you know, was great, especially like over the years, you know, like, being from the number one team and everything, you know, I think just the whole like journey was fun. And, you know, everybody on that team still has memories and we still talk to this day. So, yeah. but I mean, for sure though. Were you close with, uh, close with Donovan Mitchell? Uh, yeah. I mean, we came in together, both rookies, um, you know, best friends. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, we still hang out every day and I see him actually in a couple of weeks. I see him when I was actually in Brooklyn, you know, went to yeah. work out with him. So yeah, he was in New York cause I saw him, uh, taking batting practice. His dad works at the Mets uh, Yeah, and I saw him taking batting practice and I'm thinking he, he may have been able to be a really good baseball player if he wanted nah, to. Nah, he actually, he actually is. I mean, like, we, yeah. like, in the off season, like, mess around, like, ba- baseball and stuff. And, you know, he brings out his, you know, pitching skills and hitting, hitting <laughs> skills. So, but, no, nah, I mean, you know, just him, you know, being that athlete that he is, he's enjoy it. And I think he found out, like, basketball was number one. So, but I think, you know, maybe after career, you know, he'll go to baseball, but who knows? <laughs> There's been a couple of guys who've tried to do it. Uh, right. Famous guys. Speaking of one, you know, it's funny because that's a good segue into you. You wore number 23 yeah. in Utah. And yeah. obviously I'm referencing Michael Jordan went from basketball to baseball. He wore 23. Um, that's a heavy number. That's a heavy, yeah. that's like to be a, a basketball player and, and ask for 23 or to wear 23. You, you're kind of like, it's like, you know, a soccer player wearing number 10. It's a, it's a known number. Did you, what was your, uh, your reasoning? Did you ask for that? Were you get? I don't think you were probably not just given it, right? Uh, I mean, I asked for it. Uh, it was a number I wore back like middle school and high school and stuff. And then, um, at the time, right. I wore double zero in high school and, 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 you know, in Baylor and everything. And I just, I didn't, I actually didn't know in the NBA you could wear it until like, Jordan collection actually got traded to us and he was wearing it and I was like, oh, and then, so I actually, I'm actually like going to wear it this in Brooklyn. So it's a, it, zero. yeah. I mean, do you feel like that weight? Like this is probably the most famous number in the sport. I mean, where it'd be yeah. Jordan and then LeBron wore it for Jordan. I mean, you know, it's like, you gotta, you gotta have a game to wear 23. No, for sure. And then, uh, you know, uh, definitely, you know, Jordan was a part of it and then, uh, you know, but, you know, I, I wore the same couple of numbers like throughout my whole career. So 23, double zero and 15. So. All right. So you're going to wear 23 with the Nets. 
Nah, double zero. I switch, you know. Oh, yeah, because 23 is retired, I believe. Is it? Yeah. Uh, even better. So, <laughs> so yeah, you're going to go I'm double at, zero. Yeah, you know, new journey, new start. So, you know, go what back. about uh What about, what has Tory and Prince told you about living in uh, uh, Brooklyn? I mean, he said it was fun. Um, I actually just got my little spot today, so. Okay, good. Um, but yeah, and then you know, the whole moving process is a lot, so. But What's luckily, your support I gotta, system? Yeah. I, luckily, I ain't got to handle that, you know, uh, people you in got my people circle. For yeah, exactly. So yeah. I just got to focus on the basketball and everything. So, Well, that's something the organization definitely makes it easy for you just to focus on basketball. And um, right. it, you have a good support system. Will anybody be coming along with you to Brooklyn? Uh, I mean, I'll be by myself and then probably my dog. Um, I got a little Frenchie. Um, but you know, uh, French family, bulldog, huh? Yeah, a little uh, French. He'd be three this month, actually. And uh, then, um, but you know, family and friends, they'll come up. You know, I think they're excited. I'll be in New York. They got you know some stuff to do, like even when I'm just playing video games or just at the gym or something. So, what what happens to the dog though when you're on the road? Uh, I have somebody that watch him. I usually have somebody right. that stays with me. So, or maybe I just leave him in Texas. You know that. At his family's house, so yeah, a little French. His name Frenchy, or he's a French bulldog. Not nah, French bulldog. His name is Prince, though. Prince. Yeah. What did Torian think of that? Did, or is it is that was that done on purpose? I mean, it was kind of like uh, <laughs> I wanted to name him like Prince Royce, but so, nice. but nah, I ain't, uh, TP. I didn't tell him about it, so he'll probably laugh if I tell him his name is Prince, though. I, I thought you might have gone rolls. No, nah, I thought about it, but I was like, it's kind of like too generic, too basic, you know? So I keep the Rolls, you know, Rolls Royce. You so. got the Rolls. I, I saw you, there was a chain with the Rolls Royce emblem, right? So you don't yeah, shy away yeah. from the uh, Rolls Royce. No, 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 no. What, it, what it, the, I, I also saw a picture on Instagram. You had like a wall of sneakers. Yeah. And I think I saw your dog on one of the, in one of the pictures there. Yeah. What's, are, are you a sneaker head? What's your... What's yeah, your favorite? Sure. Um, it's tough. I really don't have a favorite sneaker. Um, you know, I try to, you know, get as many sneakers as I can, you know, just the variety. Um, but probably like Dunks or some right now, you know, those are heavy that I'll be wearing a lot. Um, but, you know, I just try to have a little bit of everything. What about spare time? What are things that you like to do, uh, listen to, or you're kind of what i know from texas you might be inclined to go a little country i'm not sure if you're a country <laughs> guy at all no nah, actually not i no i actually don't like country um because i, I mean, was talking I listen, to bruce brown one time and i was shocked yeah. that he would go to like nashville for country music festivals i said i right. never had a guy like you from boston being like a country guy right you yeah. i could have seen it because you're from texas but i i didn't want to you know so many times. Yeah, nah, I'm not really a country guy. I like, uh, you know, hip hop, R and B, and then you know, reggae. Um, All right, but th those are my like, you know, top three. But uh, country, nah. Uh, then I play video <laughs> games a lot of time. You know, in my spare time, that's all I really do. Call, like, are you binging anything? Do we binge Call, anything? Um, yeah, actually, I've been shows. I actually just started like Queen of the South. Um, okay, you know. I finished, I've been watching Stranger Things in like literally two days. Um, <laughs> That's very yeah. bingeable, right? You just start, <laughs> right. you get going on that. You got to watch the next episode. You have to. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, well, I'm an easy guy to get, you know, I can entertain myself. <laughs> well, I know you're easy and you're easy going. And people talked about, um, you know, it, it is interesting that you, your, your trade gets announced right at the same time that there's this whole you know, Kevin Durant requesting a trade and what's going on with Kyrie, it, it's got to be sort of, you know, difficult to kind of, you, you, you want to celebrate, you want to be part of, you want to be happy about it. And there's all this uncertainty going around, but is that, has that taken away from the excitement you have or, you know, how do you deal with what's going on right now? Uh, no, definitely don't take away the excitement. I think, you know, um, you know, once I got traded, it was just like, it was my first time, so I like I didn't know how to feel, and it was just like. But I was like, once I like it actually hit me, and then once I was in Brooklyn, like settled in, I was like, all right, like I'm excited for it. It's a new, you know, new journey. 
you know, new chapter in life. So, you know, just embrace it and everything. Don't even think about it. Yeah. And then you mentioned you, you got guys trying to tell you, help you out. I know Igor Kokoshkov just came on the staff, right? He was part of the, the Utah staff, right? Yeah, so you have one friendly me, face. Um, yeah, before he went to uh, Phoenix, actually. Um, okay. So excited to see him, you know, and then, you know, everybody else. So, Well, Royce O'Neal, we really appreciate you uh, joining us right now. I'm glad, you know, fans get a chance to to get to know you a little bit. Looking forward to what you can do out there for the Nets. We know that fans are kind of uh, a little, their head's spinning right now with a lot of the stuff going on, but certainly right. seeing you show up, I think fans will really appreciate getting a chance to to kind of get to know you a little bit here. And I'm glad you took the time to do that with us. No, for sure. I appreciate it. And, you know, they definitely have. And, you know, a lot of fans have been hitting me up on Instagram and Twitter and excited to see me. And, you know, I'm excited to be here and, you know, get this thing rolling. And, and you right. know, it's gonna be definitely going to be fun. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your days in Vegas there. Try and stay cool. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm about to go watch, watch the young guys get it in. So. Thanks, Royce. No problem. All right. My thanks to Royce O'Neal. Really looking forward to him in the double zero of the Brooklyn Nets next season. Summer League rolls on. We'll have another episode for you coming up. Next week, I want to thank our producer, Tom Dowd, our engineer, Isaac Lee, for our entire crew. I'm Chris Carino. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing and giving a high rating to this podcast. It is the Voice of the Nets. I'll talk to you later.